Hi, my name is Gunnar Peterson. I am a Beverly Hills-based strength coach, personal trainer, however you want to look at it. Uh, because of where I am, we meet a lot of people in the entertainment industry as well as athletes from a number of different sports. So the goal is to get them where they want to go from a performance standpoint and of course from an aesthetic standpoint. We do a lot of strength training and of course we work on flexibility, cardiovascular strength as well and hopefully everything they do in the gym makes everything they do outside the gym just a little bit better. Today I'm going to show you a series of different movements that you can incorporate as you need or as you see fit in your own workout or you could use this as a standalone workout since we hit multiple planes of motion, upper body, lower body, push, pull and of course the all important core. All right, so the farmers walk, terrific exercise, great to elevate the heart rate, not to mention you can get a lot of lower extremity work, and if you throw in the shrug like Jack's doing right here, you're gonna get the upper body work. But what we've done is put it on an 11% incline, so even more challenging, and if you have access to this, I highly recommend it. Uh, if you have a treadmill, you're gonna use dumbbells, and if not, you can always do these outside, or you can do them in a gym. Make sure you're standing upright, slightly pitch forward if you're on the incline, but if not, you're straight up and down, and your thought is abs are engaged, core is tight, and locking out at the top, flex. I wanna feel the glutes fire at the top of the movement. So this is a belt squat, it's a lower extremity move, but without the compressive forces on the spine, and he's still gonna get all the work from lower extremity. Are you not, Jack? Oh yeah. That's what I thought. Definitely. Terrific alternative to uh, a traditional back squat. You can stagger your stance, so cheat it this way a little bit. Staggered stance, a little more uh, functional, and also from a sport-specific standpoint, this is gonna be something that applies to you in any sport. Keep it natural, think about the explosiveness on the way up, it's a great tool. So this is a Cormax water bag. You can also use a barbell or a dumbbell or a dowel or anything you have, but with the water, it's dynamic. Obviously the weight's shifting inside. Think about a gallon of water, eight pounds roughly. And as Jack moves it and sweeps it under him, we're gonna add some rotation transverse plane to it. So it's more sports specific. It's gonna load the glutes, it's gonna tax his core, and it's also gonna bump his heart rate, maybe, possibly higher than his SATs. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just throwing we'll it out, out there. Let's see. <laughs> side, side, front, front, back, back. Let's see what you got. Big sweep. Yeah, love it. Boom. <laughs> Terrific. Great range of motion. So pretty comprehensive. Pretty athletic. I think I got this. Oh, for sure. So there's the pull up and then there's the moving pull up. We're gonna add a different plane of motion, a little bit of frontal plane. Jack, what do you got? Let's do it. Pull up, pull up. The core is engaged, the lats are engaged. Traveling pull up, you can do this on anywhere you have a longer chin bar, you can do it. Or even if you only have a regular chin up bar, you can go to one side, pull, one side, pull. It's about. And these things happen in a facility and you just have to go with it. I'm sorry. From a form standpoint, obviously you want your pull up form to be intact hips slightly forward, chest driving up at the top, elbows pulling to the back so the lats fire and they're engaged. And another key thing to make sure is that not only are your lats engaged and your core is engaged, but that you have insurance for your facility. All right, so bench press, push up, dumbbell press, all working pecs, front shoulders, obviously triceps are the synergist. This is a Sorenex and it's jammer arms, but these arms articulated the top so there's freedom of motion, more stability challenge for the shoulder, way more sport specific, and again, real life, which is what we're really training for. Let me see you hit it. Bang it, like you mean it. So from a form standpoint, I want you to think about keeping a straight line. At the end of the movement, you should look like Superman taking off. That's how we want it, and if you look at the way Jack did it, it was perfect. So we all hear about how the plank is such a terrific core exercise, and it is. But how about an active plank? How much more fun is that? This is a terrific piece, the Stealth Core Plankster. And it has a video game, so it's gonna to speak to a lot of different people. You don't have to do it with the video game. Of course, you can just do it for time. But with the game, it's interactive, and it kind of takes your mind off it, but it definitely doesn't take your body off it. So as you can see, he's working with a hang glider. It's flying him through trees with obstacles, with bonus things he can hit and he's gonna be engaged for a lot longer than he probably would in a plank, and definitely, mentally, he's involved in this. So a little variation of a snatch, right, which can be done with a barbell or a dumbbell. 
doing it on the jammer arms on the soren x but these are different again they articulate it makes it really unpredictable and he has to fire from head to toe on this let me see you go pop that thing bang yep stick it at the end bam love it yep so it's a big move core stabilization explosiveness from the hips glutes and shoulder at the end Tremendous for sports because it's super taxing on the central nervous system, the CNS, and metabolic. It's a big challenge. So working this single arm unilateral work is hugely important because in sport and in real life, you're not always two hands, perfect fixed path of motion. This is real. You recruit different muscles, different firing patterns in the muscles, so you become better overall, not just at sports, but in life. I don't care what you do for cardio. I don't care if it's a uh, high impact like jump rope. I don't care if it's low impact like rowing, as long as you are bumping it up every time. What we're trying to do is create an aerobic environment by doing what would traditionally be considered anaerobic movements, right? Strength movements, but sequence a certain way so that the person is gonna burn the body fat and actually sort of unveil the muscles that they've worked so hard to earn. Jack, what are you waiting for? Come on, dude, I'm sitting here talking. <laughs> Good Lord, so unbelievable. Thank you. Jack, could you make it look less athletic? What the f are you doing? Now, now bear down on it. Like get in tight to it and make it, make it like a run. That's what I want. Thank you. My work here is done. So depending on your level of conditioning and where you're trying to go, what you're capable of, and of course that you got the green light from the physician, think about starting with your workout two, three, four times a week, build on it. Listen to your body first and foremost. If your body's tired, if you're beat up, you probably could use some recovery more than you could use some workout. It's not always about the extra miles. Sometimes the extra hour of sleep will get you there. But when you're ready, tee it up and go hard.